Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Good morning and happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. So um, this is going to be a full podcast. And when I do full podcasts, part of this will be posted on YouTube. But to watch the full video, you can now watch it on Spotify. So if you just go onto my Spotify page, the full video will be there undisturbed. Um, But you know, we can't talk about stuff like this on YouTube, child. So we bring it over to the Spotify. So what's going down is if you guys do not know, the Pissy Pied Piper is back in the news. The young lady who's now a grown woman who was in that infamous sex tape back in, I think it was like 2002. She is finally testifying against R. Kelly, and this situation is really sad and disturbing. Now, throughout the court case, they're calling her Jane for Jane Doe, but come on. The internet, we've been knowing her name for years. Her real name is Roshana Lanfair, and she is Sparkle's niece. And so we've been knowing this since like 2008, so this is nothing new. We've seen pictures of her back then and now. Her video was shown all over barbershops. I mean, just all through the hood. I think everybody saw this video, and a lot of people thought it was somebody older because of the way she was acting in the video. But I think everything that she's saying on the stand is going to really explain her thought process and the things that she was going through back then. It's just really disturbing all the way around. So I want to go ahead and share this with you guys. So this is what's being reported. Who has been central to R. Kelly's legal troubles for more than two decades testified on Thursday that the R&B singer had sex with her hundreds of times before she turned 18, starting at when she was just 15 years old. Jane is the pseudo name for the 37-year-old woman at R. Kelly's trial on child pornography and obstruction of justice charges. Told jurors, she told jurors that in the late 90s when she was 13, She asked the Grammy Award winning singer to be her godfather because she saw him as an inspiration and a mentor. He first touched her breast and other parts of her body when she was around 14 years old at a Chicago recording studio. She testified that around that time he started penetration at his home on the north side at his north side Chicago home. Jane said she was 15 when they finally had full intercourse. So meaning when she was around 14, he was filling on her and, you know, using his fingers and things like that. He had basically been grooming her since she was 13 years old, you know, to finally prepare her for that big moment at 15 when he basically, you know, had intercourse with her um, and possibly took her virginity. Um, R. Kelly, who is now 55, was around 30 years old at that time. Sometimes she testified that she would have sex with other teenage girls and she would recruit them at R. Kelly's request. So this man was basically using her to, like they've said in the documentary and other girls have confirmed, to go and recruit other girls so that way he could have orgies with these teenagers, okay? Then they go on to say he stands charged in the Chicago federal court with enticing minors for sex, producing child pornography, and rigging his 2008 pornography trial. Prosecutors say that Kelly paid off and threatened Jane and her family to ensure that she didn't testify at a similar 2008 trial, which she didn't. He was ultimately acquitted. But now R. Kelly, 55, is serving a 30-year prison sentence for his conviction in New York earlier this year on other federal charges, alleging that he used his fame to sexually abuse fans over several decades. Two other minor victims are also expected to testify in the Chicago trial, which is expected to last about a month. In court, Jane revealed that she first met R. Kelly when she was 13. She was in a music group at the time, And R. Kelly, who was a friend of her aunt, attended one of their performances and gave her good feedback. It made me feel so happy that such a successful person was saying I was gifted. So I was super excited, Jane testified, according to the Chicago Tribune. She said that her aunt advised her, 
Okay, now y'all pay close attention to what I'm about to say. Her aunt, Sparkle, okay, advised her to ask R. Kelly to be her godfather, explaining that her aunt told her I should sit on his lap and rub his head and ask him to play that role in my life. That came directly from Sparkle's fake crying ass on the R. Kelly documentary. Remember, she's been on this hobo tour. You know what I'm saying? So this is coming from the victim's mouth. What I, I have nieces, okay? I would never tell my niece to get onto the lap of a grown man and rub his head seductively, okay? Because that's why you're rubbing somebody's head. The head is a very sensitive spot, especially for men who are bald. They love getting head rubs, okay? I know from personal experience. The head is a very sensitive spot, both heads actually, but we're talking about the head on your shoulders, right? So you tell your 13-year-old niece to climb into a grown man's lap and rub on his head and say, oh, I want you to be my god daddy. Bitch, really? Really, Sparkles? I see why you've been crying on this hobo tour and saying that you feel guilty because you basically sold your niece to the slaughter. 2002, the singer Sparkle, whose real name is Stephanie Edwards, claimed her niece was the underage girl in that infamous sex video featuring R. Kelly. Well, although a jury acquitted R. Kelly, surviving R. Kelly now credits Sparkle with really being one of the first to shine a light on some of his alleged abuses. You better be careful what you say to me. In 1998, Be Careful, Sparkle's duet with R. Kelly was the number one R&B hip-hop song for six weeks. But now, you don't even respect me. But about four years later, their professional relationship crumbled amid accusations Kelly was sexually abusing Sparkle's then 14-year-old niece. I was the first person who spoke up and out against him and I did it alone. Sparkle uh, says she initially time. wanted Kelly to help her niece become a rap artist. I didn't just throw my niece to the wolves. I introduced my entire family to Robert, not just my niece. My sister and my brother-in-law brought her down to the studio. You talk about in the docuseries feeling guilty to the point where you choked up and you, you cried. I should have never introduced my family to him. Why do you still blame yourself? I just feel partially responsible for, for for the introduction. What's up? She says she became concerned when her niece started showing up at Kelly's studio on a company. Sparkle claims she even called Child Protective Services. Her worst fears, she says, were confirmed when she saw a video of what she believed was Kelly and her niece engaged in a sex act. Her aunt, Sparkle, okay, advised her to ask R. Kelly to be her godfather, explaining that her aunt told her I should sit on his lap and rub his head and ask him to play that role in my life because you basically helped to pimp your niece out. But let me keep going. Then she goes on to say this. She obliged and R. Kelly chuckled a bit and said yes, that he would be her quote unquote godfather. But soon their relationship became sexual. He started having explicit phone conversations with her. And in at least one case, she says that R. Kelly asked her what color underwear she was wearing and told her that he was pleasuring himself as they spoke. So basically jerking off to a 13-year-old child. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.